Harbor program and provided that is funded, we should get that $5 million. We begin collecting the revenues, the bulk of the revenues for that bond payment next year. So those are, those are lining up nicely. And then uh, we received very positive feedback on our application for the second street project of 8 million, uh, particularly based upon the fact that we had partnerships from CTC, CEC, and the uh, Native Village, uh, given about 150,000 apiece toward the match. So that, that was very good. In terms of supporting partnerships, uh, still working with the uh, watershed project on some recycling issues. And also, as you know, uh, we've transferred the land to the Prince William Sound Science Center. They are nearing, I won't speak for them, but at last I knew they were nearing their goal uh, to be able to start construction. That's about a $20 million project, so that will bring some good uh, economic benefit. The, the White Shed Sidewalk Project keeps moving on. And as you know, we're working with the NVEA through some of the CCMC issues. In terms of infrastructure, Second Street, um, we have a plan to expand Odiac. Some of the other stuff we've sort of done and we've finished, uh, we have a uh, in the hopper for code review we finished the comprehensive plan. And in terms of staffing, we haven't increased our staffing at all this year, although the, the costs have increased, and I'll explain those in a little bit. So those are kind of the basis for what we did here. On the board, you will see what we've done, and I'll do the major highlights, and then you can feel free to jump in and ask questions wherever you like. In terms of property tax, we kept the mill rate, mill rate the same and it raised 107,000 more. The idea of that mill rate staying the same was to offset some of the $250,000 cost that had been um, sort of dedicated to the school district. So uh, I think that was the idea there, at least offset some of that. We left sales tax and use tax the same at 3.3 million. Um, just, you know, that's a big uncertainty for us. You just don't know where it's gonna go. The, in lieu of payments, the PILT payments, you can see that we had a little bit of an increase there, 23,000 and change. Uh, that was, we found that on the state website. And so we know that number is accurate. So you can see our overall tax income is up by $131,000. As you go down, we look at the real, raw fish tax. Uh, that was raised last year to offset, again, the, the 250,000 to the school district. Uh, historical average is 1.1 million. So I left that at a million 50,000. Still, yes, sir. I, so that last year we, we were at 1.4 million. I'm 100% I'm <clears throat> positive that we're gonna beat that number this year. It was a way better year. Trident wasn't able to <coughs> keep their floater processors out in the sound because of the weird way the pinks came in. And I don't know what the number is going to be, but I'll bet you anything it will surpass 1.4 million if we get to a point where we're, you know, in the hole or something. I don't think we would, uh, I think it would be okay to ramp that number up. Well, the 1.4 was actually from 2017 fishing, right? Well, we get we get the numbers from the year before. So fishing yet. in 2019, we'll get the 18 numbers, and in 20, we get the 19 numbers. So this year, we're going to get raw fish tax from, from last, last year. Yule net season? Yes. Oh, well, then it might be This lower. budget but here is for this. We're going to get that. This budget that we're looking at is from this summer's fishing. Okay. Yeah. But we don't well, know what the actual is for last year yet. You know, obviously you get you get to make whatever choices you want, but the idea was to take some of the fluctuations out of that number and keep us at a steady budget number so we could have some reliability. And we started out the first two years at eight hundred thousand, we're up to twenty fifty. The historical average is one point one. So you're not too far off of the ten year historic average. 
you can look at the, uh, the one of the uncertainties again is the forest receipts. We put in 580,000 based upon our our previous uh, or recent history. Uh, they had been decreasing by 5% a year over the past couple years from 600 and change my first year here. Um, last I recall, that had been reauthorized for 18 and 19, but I don't know about 20. Has so, not been yet, as far as I know. So th th that, that number could be a little bit uncertain. Um, uh, the pension state relief, usually I get letters on these. I don't have some of these letters. So basically you, you can go down and I've, I've kept everything pretty steady as you go down. Uh, and you get to, um, let's see, we upped the uh, Bedarki entrance fees a little bit. Uh, some of those numbers, pool numbers hoping that we're gonna have uh, better staffing and, and those numbers would be better off. Allocated administrative costs, line 100. That is 11% based upon revenue for each enterprise fund. So we've tried to have the percentage go down a little bit, but the number goes up because they have rate increases. Can you repeat what the percent is? 11 percent. And then our state debt service um, is half uh, from past years. Uh, we're getting the half and half because their budget years are different than ours. The second half of 20, well, their 21 budget year, that number could change, but we're budgeting for the worst case scenario, which is 463,000. So then we go to, we begin the expenses with city council, pretty pretty much the same. And you will see that in all of these categories, the employee costs are increased. Right now we have 59.69 staff, which is a, the same as last year. The reason the staff costs have gone up was based upon the new IBEW contract, it was mid-year in May, we did 2%, and then to get in line with our budget year, we did a 2% now and we'll do a 2% next year to carry us through the end of that contract. So there is a two and two which sort of artificially inflates these numbers. And with that, all of the FICA, the PERS, all of that stuff goes with it. So while the, the number's higher, the, the staffing hasn't, has an increase. Um, I'll be happy to happy to report that uh, I was told today that from our our medical provider uh, in early next year we will be getting a two hundred thousand dollar rebate from our stop loss carrier based upon good claims, and instead of premiums increasing, our premium is going to decrease next year a little bit. So that's our sixth year in a row with either no increase or decrease. So that's doing very well. And so I'll, I'll have to talk with Dean and figure where we're gonna put that 200,000 in there. So uh, that's additional revenue or something. Anyway, you can see that we're going, uh, as we go down here, um, the blue is a, What did I say? Blue is, an Blue is an increase. Blue is an increase, and yellow is a reduction. Where do you see blue? Oh, it's it's hard. Big. And so you, they're they're hard to see. They're hard to see. Um, and we've tried to, for each category, you can see that the the number goes up slightly. There's a there's a few exceptions to that, but for the most part. Um, We'll continue down. Say, Alan. Yes, ma'am. So besides the union contract increases, are there increases to um, the regular employees as well? Cost of living increases at all or no? Step increases. The last all year it was 
percent. Well, we have two things. We have an I, we we have the union contract, which dictates an annual percentage, and then we have our step increases, which are due to oh. staff based upon longevity. Okay. All of that stuff is programmed into this budget okay. for the coming year. Okay. In addition to that, the uh, exempt staff was programmed at two percent increase as well to match the IBEW. So those are, given this is the first evening, those are all things that you get to talk about at some point. That's included though? All that's okay. included in here. Thank you. So you can go down, mayor's pretty much steady. Um, uh, city manager's f uh, fairly steady. I, I did uh, add some things to that based upon um, a new city manager and some additional travel and so forth, so that number's gone up a little bit. You know, the other thing that's interesting is this. We have six positions open right now in the city. Uh, so we have three police officers. We have the um, uh, firefighter um, ambulance position, um, finance director, and the communications clerk uh, down in uh, communications. The funny thing about budgeting is that when you when you prepare the budget for the next year with open positions, you have to prepare for instead of a single person perhaps in that position for medical insurance, you have to prepare for family. Mm. So instead of budgeting ten thousand, you have to budget. 27,000. So that, that has added some to this budget as well. The finance uh, is budgeted for a full-time director's position. And uh, uh, so you can see that the numbers are up a little bit there as well. PERS rate went up for everything. They give that to us annually. It was 5.9%. Now it's like 6.3 or something like that. There was a slight increase in that, but it, it all adds up. Planning department's pretty steady. Um, planning commission's pretty steady. Department of Motor Vehicles. Um, I'm trying to think of why that number is different, but. It's higher, so I'll have to check on that number, but um, <laughs> that's a little bit different. Law enforcement, again, um, that number's higher. We're, we're, we, took, we took some of the money out of that particular line item last year to fund the uh, public works administrative position because we had all that money in planning. So that number was uh, artificially low. I think we took about 70 grand out of that. So you can see this position in law enforcement is fully funded for five officers. Now, if that's, that's where you end up, then this is fully funded. So that 413 that we budgeted last year was for four officers or three or? It was for five. So how, how, then if this were still for five, how come it's that much higher? Yeah, higher? what we did this year in order to attract police officers in this budget is we did a $5 an hour starting salary across the board to attract police officers plus a, uh, uh, a sign-on incentive for people to come here and those increase the costs. And that wasn't budgeted last year? That wasn't budgeted last year. We haven't had, you know, we're, we're down to, we have two police officers and a chief, so um, trying to try something new based upon experiences of other uh, agencies and w w make those decisions one at a time as they get qualified candidates. Health insurance here is because of that. It drives all that. Because you have to do for families instead of a single people. <clears throat> okay.
uh, jail operations are pretty pretty steady. Fire and EMS is pretty steady. It's, again, they're highlighted in yellow. The health insurance, instead of a single person, we had to budget for a family. So that's why the increase there. Um, in the information services, their numbers are up a little bit because instead of having a director and adding two supervisory positions for the library and the in the um, museum, it increased the wages a little bit, so that's gone up a little bit, but that, that other position is still budgeted in there. Um, some of these expenses are, you know, pretty steady based upon historic experience that we have for electricity and facilities, you know, what we need. Facilities, the Public Works Administration is Sam's position, um, and it's pretty steady. You can see that we dropped the professional services number to accommodate for other expenses, so they're, they're pretty steady. Facility maintenance is pretty steady. Um, Street maintenance, pretty steady, a little bit higher on the uh, um, chip ceiling. We added some, some money for chip ceiling. Uh, expensive to run a big fleet. It's just, um, it's expensive. This year we had, you know, as our fleet ages, we have lots of breakdowns and uh, have to repair them. Um, everything else is pretty steady. Let's go down to equipment maintenance is pretty steady. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Go back up on street maintenance, the light item there, lease rentals. Yes. So what was the lease last year? The lease amount was? 10,000. 10,000. It was 10,000 this year. We were in a street sweeper at one time and... So that question is coming up later. I'll be asking about what that cost was, you know, what that lease cost was on that mini excavator. I think in the in the agenda there's for purchase a new one. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to be able to say, all right, well, what did we pay for the lease one? You know, do that comparison. So just yeah. would it be? Yeah, and I I don't have that in front of me. So okay. <clears throat> all right. We'll talk about that when we get to that agenda item. Okay. Uh, snow removal is pretty steady. Equipment maintenance is pretty steady. Um, parks maintenance is pretty steady. Everybody's done a really good job of, of staying fairly steady in what they're trying to do. And I will reiterate that we are not making progress in terms of facility improvements, nor fleet and capital improvements. This is, again is a is a fairly bare bones budget, noting again that between debt service and uh, outlays to other entities, we're spending 43% of all of our revenue. Um, cemetery maintenance, uh, we've sorry. Yes. Is Parks and Rec is Parks and Rec losing a temporary employee position, or is that? Getting, I don't, I just saw the temporary um, position park and rec was down. But I didn't know if that was being absorbed by the pool or something. No, the, um, yeah, I think they're restructuring that a little bit where that, where that goes to. And I'll have to check on that number, but um, sometimes I miss putting numbers in, but I'll check on that. And what they do is they change things around. They put, uh, they, they move stuff. I know they do some around. sharing across. Yeah, they do. And they do a lot of sharing. I yeah, I just didn't know. And, if that was and I think because that. they did hire a full-time staff member to go between the two, they don't need as much temporary employee money. 
As I recall that one in particular. Okay. Okay. Um, the pool is pretty steady. Um, you know, we have some big repairs going on over there, and um, so we should be in good shape on that after those repairs are done. The ski hill, I dropped their repair and maintenance. We've given them 15,000 the last two or three years in a row. And I think, uh, you know, they've been doing pretty well. So we dropped that about 5,000 uh, just to keep something in there. So they're able to, you know, work on a new building or something. Non-departmental, uh, this is the stuff that sort of runs a lot of stuff. We try to keep the attorney fees. Um, well, we've added two things. We have we have the state lobbyist, two lines up. I've added the federal lobbyist as the conversation was going at 37.5. That's a new line item. I don't know where you'll end up with that one. Again, we've tried to keep the attorney fees at $100,000. Uh, that is always driven by, uh, you know, staffing things that go on. You're going to see that as we go, as you get your audit for 2019, you're going to see that attorney fees are pretty high. And that's because we've just you know, we've we've had some grievances, we had an arbitration, we've had a number of things going on, and that's really driven the cost up. Um, audit fees have come down a little bit. I think in 2019 or for 2018, we ended up spending about 106,000. Uh, met with uh, Steve that was here for the audit presentation a couple weeks ago. He indicated to me that 82 would be the cost and hopefully that it would be lower than that. Uh, our insurance for our liability insurance always goes up, usually always goes up, but you can see that it's at 20, 126.8, I don't check that number, but I, I think it's higher than that. The next category down, the, the long-term debt service, I don't have these numbers exactly right. I decreased the 765 to 735 because I know the final number is 198, 758 that Dean gave me, I think. So he's gonna have to give me the exact numbers in all those categories, but that's that's where we are on that. That doesn't change very much. It just, as as debt gets retired, bonds get paid off, it collects less interest, so the, the, the payment goes down a little bit every year. I think in the budget, you can look at that, our, our real drop off in debt service is 2028. Second question, Alan. Yes, sir. That, what is that reimbursement of garnished? It's in the, the one you just got done with. The reimbursement of garnished something. Fun. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's if we have too much fun, we have to be reimbursed for it. So no, I, <laughs> I, I think when they garnish wages uh, from somebody, Sometimes those are reimbursed, and we have to pay that reimbursement back to them. And so that's the category for that, but we don't have any reimbursements going right now. Um, interfund, interfund transfers, transfers to other, other entities. This is where I've put in the numbers as I assumed the conversations were going, but that may not be. We did 844 and 906 for 1.5 million to the school district. Since I've been here, I've always been trying to, I don't think it really matters whether it's first half or second half. I've always been trying to get those numbers consistent so that they can rely on that number in whether they're doing their, whenever they do their budget. This is what I've tried to do here. The 875 is higher, the 875 is a little bit lower than the July to December. So, but it's still $1.75 million. Of course they do their in kind. The other thing we did was the CCM budget appropriation based upon the presentation that Greg Myers did to us, we know that they're going to require other money. The three hundred thousand. I have some suggestions about that. Uh, if you if you 
want to get those from me, but um, how to deal with that, but you can see that number is in there. Resource Center, Community College, the Chamber of Commerce that asked for an increase last year from 70 to 90 uh, that you approved is in there. They're in kind in their lease for a grand total of 10.7 million in revenue and 11.848 in expenses, 1.16 million. If you add up the 300 to the school district, you add up 2.5 million uh, or 250,000 to the school district. As you know, I had recommended 1.5 on a continuing basis, at least for three years. And then you add up the uh, loss in revenue on the debt service reimbursement, you're looking at about a million dollars. So all things being equal, this is a pretty, uh, a pretty tight budget other than those, those issues in the general fund. Our numbers are a little bit off. Did you do a change? Yeah. In between? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of an all day thing. I... Yep, got to happen. Can I ask I... a question about it? Do we have enough data on the health insurance yet to put real numbers in or not quite, Dean? Don't, didn't Excuse we create a trust? Okay. Yeah. Um, let's let council ask questions first. Or at least get an acknowledgement. <clears throat> Okay, that's the general fund. Is there any questions anybody would like to ask? I'll I'll try to answer or answer those. Yes, sir. So it had one on the uh, on the health insurance. You said there was a two hundred thousand dollar approximately. Yes. All right. I think I might be wrong on this. I thought my understanding of the savings would go into a separate account. So if if we had the reverse happen in a couple of years, you'd have that money sitting there, and it wouldn't burden the employees, that was the incentive to be healthy, so to speak. So I don't think that would go in the general fund. I believe that would go someplace else. Well, I, I can't I can't address what you were told when it was first implemented, which was what, 15? No, before that, <sighs> whenever it was implemented. All I can tell you is structurally what happens. Structurally, if there's a if if all the money's not expended in anybody's health insurance account, um, Leif, would you go back up to one of the individual budgets for the pool? If you look at their health insurance, they have twenty seven one fifty five. If they come in um, and they get a single person instead of a family and all of the premiums aren't expended in any given years on because we hit, we we don't reach our reinsurance or reinsurer that money goes back into the general fund because that's where it comes from there's no particular trust fund set up for health insurance however um, last year dean set up a an account for us where we will be able to account for savings in the plan what happens in any given year is we have reinsurance. For everybody in the health plan, uh, I kind of think of it this way. There's $55,000 budgeted for everybody in the health plan. If you hit $55,000, the reinsurance takes over. Our exposure is the 55,000, but the exposure to the the individual staff member is only 6,000. So there's that place in between where the city's taken all the risk in the self-insurance. How much are the employees paying for their portion of that 27,000? Uh, it ranges from a single about 400 a month to, I forget the top number for a family, 1,000 a month. And that hasn't gone up in? The same time period? We haven't changed that in the same time period. That is that is memorialized in the IBEW contract. That is their limit. That's their total exposure for any particular employee. If the thing goes if the thing goes off the cliff, we're still gonna pay the fifty five thousand per person. That's our maximum exposure. I did that chart for you on the board and I said, you know, here's here's all the premiums we collect. There, you know, employees are paying, exempt employees pay nothing. Uh, 
and the union employees pay X amount. That's how much we collect. Here's our total exposure. Our total exposure in any given year is about 3.1 million, something like that. If 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 everybody reached the reinsurance amount, but based upon our claims, we're going to receive a rebate of 200,000 because in the contract they can rebate up to 25 percent of their premiums based on a good history. Does that help? No, I guess I, I'm trying to remember. I thought that was the incentive, so to speak. Well, not run to the hospital if you got a headache, and if we save money, then that would be. And I may be wrong, but I thought that's the way that the intention was. It would be money set aside, so if the premiums went the other direction, we'd have this pool. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. I. I. I it was never. I, I don't understand it that way. I wasn't here when it was formulated. Yeah, and ago, and speaking, with, speaking with the previous finance director, that structure was not in place. They'd have to be running to the hospital an awful lot of times to hit 55, over 55,000. That's when that reinsurance kicks in. Yeah. So you're not, there's no one. Yeah, I just remember it that way, and as long as that's, not what was told, and I'm fine with it. I just, yeah, it seems I to me that well, that was in there someplace. I, I, I can't tell you what was said or not said. I, I wasn't here. I can only tell you way this structurally how it works. Well, I was told how it works. And then the lease on the, I'm sorry. Councilman Baylor. The lease on the back, well, we don't know what that, how that breaks down there. No. I don't. I can, I'll find that out. <clears throat> and then one more. <laughs> yeah, Councilman Baylor, I might just throw in uh, CC rented a, uh, we leased a uh, tracked vehicle for three months and it was $22,000. And then the purchase price for the same one was $80,000. So mm -hmm. we kind of went through that same, if that gives you a little bit of an idea of it. Uh, Councilman Baylor. So in the, in the packet, if I remember correctly, we had... I think it was the amount of 43,000 for the federal lobbyist. Uh, right, and so in the budget you got 37,500. Yeah, I think it was a little more. I think it was. Um, something a month. Well, I, don't know. I, don't, I don't I don't know care what the numbers. I'm just saying there's different. Yeah, I don't know why that number stuck more. in my mind for some reason, okay. but I, I'll, All right. I'll change that to whatever you want to change it to. Well, we got to discuss it, but uh, yeah, and difference. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, uh, Vice Mayor Meyer. Yeah. Vice Mayor Meyer. Uh, what's your suggestion on making up the 1.1 1 .1 <laughs> in the budget? Well, or where do, where do you um, suggest to cut or add more revenue? If I were doing this budget by myself, I would go school district go back to 1.5 million, saving 250 thousand. I would take the hospital back to 600,000, knowing that the hospital, uh, what you're trying to do is buy time. Just like we were doing last year, you're buying time. So you go to 600,000, noting that that's only gonna cover them for half the year, and you're gonna have to make another decision in June about funding. At that point, you know that your exposure is about 300,000 because they've already told us, a 900,000, they think they can get through the year and keep up with all their debts. Now, we don't, we, all, we don't know what else happens based upon the lack of ferry and those things, so that might be good or bad for them, but at least you have that. That saves you 550. And then I would, uh, I would raise the sales tax by 1% and raise 500,000. That covers your million. That that's not that's not a lot of pain for everybody, but it's sharing in it for everybody, and that that gets rid of your deficit. Other than that, you're looking at a hundred thousand um, dollars. You can do that hundred thousand dollars relatively easy just by snipping a little bit here and there to get yourself to a balanced budget. That's what I would do. Councilman Glason. Um, my first one is the investment earnings. I think that's for the central treasury. 
I think it, it's money that Dean is it money that courses through the bank here because it's not it's not the investments that we have with UBS. They're just our daily running the money through First National Bank here for our accounts. Okay, so that doesn't have anything to do with like the water and sewer. They all have like five, four, five hundred thousand dollars. Is that invested in the? That's fund? that's all. It's called the repurchase account. Okay. And most of that money is just running through there. It's not a long term or even a short term investment. It's just it's not very much money. Not very much money. The other thing is, I just wanted to reiterate the point that the raw fish tax. You know. I think it's going to be like six or seven hundred thousand more than what you have budgeted for. Of course, we don't know that until it actually comes out. But I think it's going to be a lot more. When um, do we find that number out? Well, we usually get that about mid-October. In fact, I thought I would, you know, hope hoping I was going to get it, but uh, this evening. But I. I I think from a philosophical standpoint, what I've tried to push forward is that um, being really conservative on the front end helps you so much on the back end. For example, if you look at this budget right now. Hey, well, let me finish my, okay. okay, so the last time we went low and we got 700,000 more, it kind of got chewed up by, you know, Dean, worked his magic and got rid of some debt with that. And so I would like to see us use that for people we're shorting instead of just having it vanish. Cause when I got on council, nobody knew where it went. And I just wanted to, if it comes in that high well, and we have that extra, we should, and we, if we choose to short the school to give the hospital money, we should at least give them the hope that if that money comes in, that we will fund them. Well, one reason people stay in this town is the school. In terms of the fish tax, there's, there's no mystery and there's no magic. You have, it takes about X amount of dollars in your bank account to keep the whole operation running, paying payroll, paying all of your bills on time, and that number fluctuates, you know, two and a half, three million dollars, or maybe a little bit more. When you got the extra fish tax money, that account was down to about two million. So you were living right on the edge of not having enough money to keep the operation running. So the fish tax was not extra. It was it was not extra. All it did is it restored cash flow that you had before that, that didn't come in through other revenue sources. It was extra over what we budgeted. That's what I was saying. Well, I know, but you had expenditures throughout your budget that were far beyond that. So it, it, taking it taking one account individually and looking at it in the big scheme of things, you know, for for now, when I, when I look at a budget, the only thing I think about is what's your, what's your number at the end of the year? Because there's a thousand nuances in this budget. For example, you budget 580,000 for forest receipts. If the come in. forest receipts aren't authorized, but you get 600,000 more in fish tax, you're even, and that, that's kind of the preventative measure that you have to take in these budgets. The other thing is determine whether or not you anticipate that the, the school district or the hospital or whoever you're giving money to is being shorted. The question is, can everybody operate, operate well on what they have available to them at the time? And, um, because the city is the basis, the, the city is responsible for everybody at the end of the day. We have to make sure that everybody's going well. If, if anybody's going to fail, there's only one place to get bailed out, and that's here. And that includes everybody. We own all the buildings. We, we own all the maintenance. We own all the stuff. So the more we expose ourselves on the front end, 
the more difficult we have. Our our permanent funds down to seven point three million, um, you know, and that's that's not bulletproof. So nope. just from Councilman Allison, yeah, I did. Um, I don't think our workshop is a time to be debating whether or not we're we're going to give money to this person or that person. It's, that that needs to happen at the during the council meeting. What was asked was was what the manager's thoughts were on where the money could from come from, and that's one thought. Um, you know, we've discussed the um, some of the school bond debt being paid for out of permanent fund because, quite frankly, that's why some of it was put there and we have resolutions that say that. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, council has to agree on getting money to, out of the permanent fund, so, so that's one option. Um, I want to see the hospital um, show us that they're making some kind of effort at, uh, at cost savings. Uh, all we've heard from the hospital is that um, we're not going to have enough money to pay our prayers and we're not going to have enough money for this. But uh, then on the other hand, we hear um, we did a salary adjustment to everybody because we needed to adjust everybody up and, and we hired this person and that person and now we've got this many more people and, <clears throat> and then we hear that we've cut a bunch of people. So, you know, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what's, what's going on, but I want to see some kind before I give them another 300,000, I'm going to, I want to hear what they're doing for cost savings. So, I mean, there's obviously a $1.2 million gap in, in what's being proposed here, but uh, till we get ready to, to debate it and go, <laughs> go down line by line, I'm not, you know, I, I don't want to argue here. I just want to get ideas thrown out about uh, what we could maybe do. Um, as we as we near time, if I can go on to the enterprise funds, and then uh, we can go back to whatever you want to go back to. Can, can, can you quick quickly tell us where you're accounting for? Well, maybe it's the enterprise fund, the uh, the additional fish tax, and the additional wharfage. Yeah, uh, that we got to repay those bonds where that is accounted for here. Yeah. Um, if you go down these these accounts, uh, let's go down to the harbor here. Harbor is the first one. There it is. Uh, they have. They are not the the. The only thing that's being collected right now is the additional fuel tax wharfage amount. And that will be accounted for in the line item wharfage. Uh, might create a special wharfage fee, but that's where it would be accounted for. None of those other fees are being the accounted for. The budget for 2019 didn't include that or did it? Because we didn't even vote on that until April. It did not include it. So how come we're only 2,000 more when that wharfage went up a lot? Well, it should be significantly more than that. I just got an email very late in the day from from Tony that indicated they they went through their stuff and the number is going to be much higher than that. So we went across the board. Philosophically, we went uh, we highlighted our inability, financial inability to purchase equipment, vehicles, and. Uh, properly maintain buildings. And the harbor is probably one of the shining examples of that. So we talked about raising fees 5% a year for five years. This is our second year into that. So you will see that all of these enterprise funds have a 5% increase in their, their rates across the board. So it goes from 1.4 million to 1.5 million in terms of revenue. And then you can see, um, and as those numbers change, there will be enough, there will be about 370,000 additional revenue between the raw fish tax, the wharfage fee, uh, and there was one other in that, that all of that money will be used to pay the, the debt service on the bond, which is about, 372,000 at at the rates the la we last checked it. So you can go down to uh, 
the expenses um, a little bit here. Uh, of course, wages, same same issue relative to the uh, the two percent, the two percent, and and the increases. Um, you can see professional services went up a little bit, anticipating that there's going to be some some work to do for the uh, State Harbor Grant uh, and so forth. Um, of course, they spent a little bit of money trying to up repair and travel lift improvements and those kinds of things, putting away 150 in the CIP. Um, and um, but all in all in all, the important thing to note is the the increase in the uh, five percent across the board. Same thing for the sewer. Um, five percent increase across the board. Uh, relative, you know, wages, those kinds of things are the same. No big, big changes in in anything. Of course, when you have a few additional funds, you're trying to make up for some of the things that you haven't done in the past, like structure maintenance of the water treatment plant and the and the ferry pumps, those kinds of things. So you can see that they spend a little bit more as well. Uh, water, same issue, 5% increase across the board. Um, wages, those kind of things make up for some of that difference. And then uh, refuse, same, same, uh, same issue with refuse, up 5%. Um, and their expenditures, again, uh, they all have an 11% allocation to administrative costs, and that's a rather large expense. You can see those have increased even though the percentage didn't go up because they have more revenue. Uh, maintenance, um, and we have a lot of bear-proof lids still to be put on. And... Um, some of these numbers, they are over their cost because I adjusted the administrative cost. So if there's a deficit in any of these, that will be adjusted. Oh yeah, camper, we kept the fees exactly the same as last year. The reserve funds budgeted, we, we did 25,000 last year for the drawings. I don't know if that's spent or gonna be spent in this coming year. Uh, they've adjusted some of their fees to to reflect changing employees and philosophy. So um, those are the enterprise funds. Yes, sir. Is there a reason we kept the Kodiak Camper Park the same? Uh, just based on past history, that number remains relatively same. We don't gain any more spaces. We're really afraid that if we, uh, I think the fear is that if you get too far, um, you're gonna price yourself out of the market. And of course this coming year here, you never know what's gonna happen without a ferry. So uh, I would I would anticipate that that revenue is actually gonna be down and it would be made up with reserve funds that they have, have about 100,000 in reserve. So um, our intent was to expand that park by six spaces or so and modernize it, but without a ferry, it's yeah. moot point. Councilman Gleason. Um, do the enterprise funds, I don't, do they get interest off of their depreciation accounts? I, I, I'm assuming that they do. I, I don't have a good answer for that right off the top of my head. Okay. But I'm assuming for any money that they have held in reserve that gains interest, they get their allocated amount based upon the, the amount of money that they have. Would that show up somewhere in here? Um, yeah, I just, I, I don't know which line item it would be right I, offhand. I just wondered if they did. Yeah. Maybe if you could, if you get a chance to find that. Council. Can, okay. Leif, can you go up to income? I just want to see. Um, go to refuse, I think.
It might, well. I don't think it's part of the budget. It might be in the audit. Yeah, I have to look at it. Because that money is held in the general fund at UBS, and most of it is anyway. And that interest, I don't know how it's allocated for it in the finance department. <clears throat> all we've ever seen is a total interest on all of that money. Yeah. I, if, if we don't give them their cut, it would be nice <clears throat> to because we're trying to push for them to be able to afford some of their equipment. <clears throat> I'm pretty excited that this excavator is getting paid for, you know, not by the city. So. Uh, council, one wild card that might be coming up is the uh, 2016 Pink Salmon Disaster Settlement, and there was a municipal piece in that, and originally they took that out. Uh, Noah took it out, and then they kind of got lobbied, and it got put back in. And the way it stands, I think there's somewhere around $5 million total for municipalities, and uh, Cordova would be one of the larger recipients there, if not the largest. And it, it looks like where they're kind of leaving it now is it has to be uh, dedicated to um, <clears throat> purposes that restore fisheries or support that. So um, in the same way that those secure rural school fund windfalls were kind of tucked aside, um, you can use those funds to pay for current work you have in process uh, and, and still be able to kind of take the city's money and bank that if you need to. So hopefully we'll get some more clarity on that in the next few weeks on what that's going to look like for Cordova. And we should be getting an application soon. <clears throat> what would y'all like me to do next? I mean, in terms of the budget, are, are we going to have a budget session next week? <clears throat> Susan, oh, do you? I don't know. Uh, I thought we'd maybe scheduled one for that I Wednesday. That yet, but we can okay. talk about it. That pending agenda. Because at some point, you know, philosophically, you have to direct the person preparing the budget where to go, and uh, then it's just a matter of changing numbers. Um, so, uh, Councilman Baylor. So that means we we need to have a discussion where we're going to raise more money if that's the case for, <laughs> or where we're going to cut. Yeah, well, either or, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So in addition to talking about where we're going to cut, it'd be nice to talk about if there are options for places to generate more money as well. Um, like one per, you said a one percent sales tax increase. I guess sales tax is kind of up in the air right now with the ferry next summer, but. I don't know, it'd just be interesting to look at different um, scenarios, like with the 1% or a seasonal sales tax increase or something. If um, we still have the picture of the board when we were doing strategic planning, so in that we, we highlighted the various revenue sources. And for the most part, um, your two real producers are sales tax and property tax. Mm -hmm. Property tax produces about 200,000 per mill, 224 per mill based upon value. So you can, you can calculate that pretty easily. The other one is sales tax. We use as a rule of thumb in this, in our current uh, thoughts that raises about 500,000 per percent. Everything else that we explored raised in the neighborhood of $75,000, $125,000. They were all relatively small contributors to the bigger picture. The other major revenue source is the um, raw fish tax and a low of 600,000 in recent 10 year history low of 600, high of 1.6. So you have a million dollar fluctuation in that without really any way to predict. An individual fisherman or a group of fishermen can say, oh, we had a great year last year, but then you get your raw fish tax number and it's, it's not what you thought. That's what happened to us last year. We thought this got that. So again, the philosophy was to take 
the unpredictability out of it by basing it on a 10-year average number, which is 1.1 million. So that's pretty steady. Councilman Glazen. Are we supposed to get some tax from Amazon? <laughs> no. No, never? Well, you know, all that stuff is being sorted out. Uh, still, AML is having meetings on that. And at this point, anything we got from Amazon would just be, it almost be wouldn't be worth the effort to collect it. A lot of people use it. And I a lot of people use it. They're going to be using it more now. But, you know, in, in things like that, there's 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 federal issues, state issues, and your municipal issues. And usually on the lower end of that, the municipality's cut is something less than. And so you have to have really strong legislation. Another thing that's really going to be unpredictable for us is you know, the, the influx of, of uh, money from the sales of cannabis. No, that's right, you didn't, you're not, you're not taxing that, so um, just kidding. Trying to be well, it is not open yet. Sales tax. The sales it's tax, not open yeah. Yet. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's where you are. Uh, We saw some uncertainty in some of the numbers until we get letters from the state notification. So, but they're not going to be far off of where we are. So, I know a couple years ago, or I, three years ago now, two years ago, the sales tax cap got shut down, but it went from a big increase from I think it's three hundred, three thousand, and it was raised to from three thousand to seventy five hundred, if I'm remembering correctly. But was there any kind of breakdown of an, an incremental or a more, yeah, a lesser increase in what that might potentially raise, like if I'm going from 3,000 to 4,000? Well, the increase from 3,000 to 7,500 raised 125,000. Yeah. Okay. Not a lot. Thank you. I will, I will go back to what I've said for the past three years. Cordova, in my estimation, is about an $11 million operation. How do you get to $11 million with reliability on a year-to-year -year basis without burdening anyone too much? And that's still the same thing that we're trying to work through now three years later. We've had unknowns come at us, you know, uh, hospitals sort of gradually creeped up on us now. Based on the path that you're on right now, if this becomes uh, tribal health, potentially you're alleviated of that $600,000 a year responsibility. You're kind of golden then in terms of your budget and revenues. But you're also going to have, if it doesn't go through, remember, you're going to have the burden of the purse, whether that's a lump sum, whether that's monthly, however that repayment scenario is going to go. I mean, if you, if you looked at $14 million over 20 years, that's $700,000 a year plus interest. If you have to pay it all at once. Good luck with that. <laughs> Good luck with that. But that's ours no matter what. Even if we close the facility, we have to pay it, so. Well, that, that's what, I think that's what Sitka and their model did was the asset purchase agreement to gain that fund so they didn't have to, to lay that cash out, but that's yet to be determined. You're also going to have next year, when you get the second street grant, you're going to have that match seven hundred eighty thousand for eight million. That's over a course Less of than a that. number of years. Yeah, it's, a, it's it's spread out. Sorry, didn't mean that. Well, and that was twenty twenty one, wouldn't it? Okay. Yes, we've got some for 
Whitehead Road too, don't we? Have a match next year? Yeah, the stairs. Yeah, so both of those got to be in this budget somewhere too, I think. Yeah. Well, I think we need to we need to schedule a time where we're going to sit down and debate some. I don't know. There's eight or ten key things that I think we need to philosophically agree upon. Uh, Know, start with staffing and uh, how much we're going to support the hospital, how much we're going to support the schools, uh, whether or not we're going to look at, at increasing any taxes, uh, whether or not we're going to take money from the permanent fund for the school bond, whether we're going to raise property tax to pay that difference that the state's not going to pay for the school bonds. Um, I think we need to we need to schedule a time to have those types of discussions and you know, then, you know, all of this is just details based upon those, you know, the answer to those eight or ten philosophical questions that we need to, four of us need to agree upon, and we can go from there. Can we set that at this meeting, or do we have to wait until the regular meeting to make a date for that? Well, we we can discuss it now, I guess, but we, we would set that at pending agenda. What's next Wednesday? What day is that? Is it the 10th? The 10th. Ninth. That was the school board, possibly. Right. But we're we'll talking about that later. Right. I will not be in town that day. I'll be here then. I will be out of town. Maybe able to call. I think I get in that day, so it would have yeah. to be an evening. We can take it up under pending agenda. Is there other questions on the budget presentation? Or? Oh, we got all the good news. <laughs> <laughs> we always start there. Thank you for getting us to that point, Alan. And yeah, thank you. You're welcome. We'll get us some decisions to make, and then we can make some changes. I'll go ahead and recess for 10 minutes. Recess? <sighs> or